Good morning, nation. How to supercharge your business in 2024. Coming up today, mornings in the lab with Keith and Nicole. We're also going to get into uh, talk about how Bo Jackson's workouts have over the years. Looks like music coming in. Oh, there we go. What's up, Nicole Bernard? Good morning. How are yeah. you? Good. We're back. Day four. Oh, day four. I, it was easier to get up today. It's starting to, my body's starting to understand what's going on finally. It, it's, I appreciate you saying that. I got up this morning with extra energy and I'll yes. tell you why. So I know when we created the show, it was to help our audience and help this new audience find energy. And when you start something new, the first day you're excited. Yeah. Uh -huh. and, and we did it right. The second day, okay, the momentum's great. Yesterday was okay, like the third day, just like any routine. Uh -huh. We did it. And then we had our day. And then I'm looking, I had an active day. I should, we'll, we'll get into that in a few moments. I'm sure you did as well. And then as I was wrapping my evening up, I'm going, wow, tomorrow's already day four. And before we know it, Friday's here and the first week is in the books. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's how you start a routine. Right. And, and kudos to you for getting up in the middle of the night to get that routine started. So <laughs> listen, nation, business athlete, nation, Keith and Nicole here, mornings in the lab, our brand new morning show streaming live on the live in the lab with Keith Billis channel. We've recently launched the mornings in the lab channel. So I invite you to subscribe there. Nicole, we're just creating the whole in the lab series. So we have, of course, the business athlete performance lab. We yeah. have Live in the Lab with Keith Billis, our flagship show that goes noon, Monday to Monday, noon central time, one o'clock Eastern. We stream it live for interaction with audience. We drop the podcast moments later. And then we, and then we have two dads in the lab with Keith and Di on Fridays at noon. Uh, a great conversation. Hey, it's 201 in Canada in the parenting category. That's amazing. Good job. Yeah. And y'all haven't even been doing it that long, have you? I know. So listen, our mornings in the lab shows already dropped i think in new zealand or in ghana somewhere with some ratings i'll have to show it to you oh yes oh, yes or maybe awesome. even in canada we're, uh, we're, we're gonna make a difference here so 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 and then keith and cole of course we go monday to friday here mornings in the lab with with a goal to help you guys find a friendly voice to start your day and uh, be accountable to your goals help yourself get through your day etc cetera, etc cetera. i know tomorrow a hook for the audience nicole has a reveal mm -hmm. yeah Hey, how are you feeling today? Oh, must so much better. <clears throat> Yesterday I felt like a human and today I feel just like <laughs> normal. So thank God. Just like normal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it was rough. Just like the past few weeks, you know, it was like enough to make you feel bad and then you'd, I'd feel better and then it'd come back in some other form. So yeah. I don't know if we just kept giving it to each other because it's been like this in my house, but everybody is feeling better. So there you go. There you go. So nation, we're continuing to figure our format out here on the show. And I can tell you, Nicole, we are 1% even better today, even more prepared today. We've got more topics for us to talk about today. I saw them. I'm yes. really excited. We have some topics to talk about today. We have, uh, listen, there's some first ever sleep studies that have been conducted that link sleep duration to how long you're going to live. And now that we're doing this morning show, we might be on the decline. Right. <laughs> So, so Baffle Nation, mark this in your calendars. You've witnessed the decline of Keith and Nicole's lives <laughs> due to the fact that we're doing a morning show now and we're sleeping less. Right. But we're trying to be accountable. So I don't know. How does that balance out? We're trying to be, <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Yes, we're gogginsing it. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we, I think we need to make this part of our goal. And I know when we met, it was our goal to get David Goggins on our show. Mm -hmm. There's really no reason we keep doing this and showing up and finding ways to maybe get in front of him, dropping his name and just keep talking. He's gonna recognize that, okay, these two, I'll use a term from his book, but I won't say the F word out sharp. These two mo show up all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get on the show with those two mofo. Yep. And we gotta use his hashtag, stay hard. So maybe he'll see that. Ah, there you go. Yes, mm -hmm. that could. that's a good plan. That's absolutely a good plan. So, yeah, so we're gonna talk about uh, sleep deprivation. I got something for you. Do you cruise? Have you been on a cruise? No. Yeah, yeah, I have not. And I'm not sure I want to go on one after your, the topic I thought we we're going to talk about. 
Oh, is that what you call a hook? <laughs> so see, we're four days in and the chemistry is even getting better. Bernard's dropping hooks out for the audience. Yes, because we are going to talk about, we're going to talk about the fact that if you cruise and you like to hang out naked on your cruise, because I'm suspecting Nicole Bernard, some people like to hang out naked. Yeah, I would think so. Uh, is this the form for me to reveal the situation I caught myself in? Including peanut butter and uh, yes. being naked. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes, please. Because so, yeah, peanut butter and being naked. I don't know what just came into my mind, but uh, yeah. Is that, a mor- is that a morning show topic, Nicole Bernard? I think so. Is, uh, is that like, a way for me to be vulnerable with the audience and get the audience to go, okay, I can be relatable to this dude? All right, let me. Yeah. So I was, think Keela and being naked. This yeah. well, <laughs> I was talking to a fellow yesterday. His Billis, you got it. You find your niche, you double down, you go even harder. I'm like, all right, so we're talking naked and peanut butter, fourth day in on the morning show. And it's clear this segment's probably going to make the trailer. But years back, there was a product called Canary. I don't know if they're around anymore. There are these in-house like cameras and like security cameras before oh, Nest familiar. and before. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. And I'm a nerd, so I, I like to play with cool technology and new things. And it was new at the time. So I was like, okay, I get these brand new. It was, oh, it was a Kickstarter. So I had a Kickstarter addiction for a while there, actually. I would order things, and I'd be in meetings with my team, and then all of a sudden, Amazon and FedEx would show up. I'm like, what the hell? Oh, you've ordered this three and a half years ago on a Kickstarter. I'm like, oh, it doesn't fit my current iPhone. (laughs) Anyways, so I get these canaries, Nicole, and I place them around the house. I used to have a peanut butter addiction yeah and and i still you perhaps do, yeah. do. yeah <laughs> all right audience here's the relatable situation for business athlete nation so i used to often get up in the middle of the night to wander into the kitchen and just dig into the peanut butter jar and maybe sometimes put chocolate chips in there so one morning I wake up with some alerts on my phone from the old canary. I look in there and I'm like, what's this? And I look, like, oh my goodness, what is that in the kitchen at 3.30 in the morning? And it was not a sight you would want to see on any indoor security camera. There might have been a, how shall we say this? A, a bear in the kitchen with, with his paws in the peanut butter jar on full display. For the cameras to see. Who else has access to the cameras? I hope just you. <laughs> just, yes, just me. As a matter of fact, I captured it. And no, I'm not. Listen, Nation, I'm not pulling it out on the air. I had a guy on Live in the Lab with Keith Billis challenge me, Nicole, a couple of days ago to show my, my, my airband photos from years back when I was used to dress in spandex. Oh, that's a whole other topic for another show. <laughs> spandex and mesh shirts. I used to make them myself. Wow. <laughs> four, four days in, kid. <laughs> hey, I was a master in home economics. I was the best. I was like, why can't I make a mesh shirt? It was like those mesh shirts had cut off above the belly button and uh-huh. big mesh, and then I cut the arms off. Dude, I rocked it, man. And then I threw the old blacks. So that was before Lululemon. So that's when spandex. Yeah, was wait, what year was this? What? Oh, I went to the hockey with my daughter last night. And if she's going to listen to this today, <laughs> I was trying to get her to do bits with me last night. Like, hey, let's do a, let's do some bits for my show. She kept rolling her eyes. So now her dad's talking about <laughs> naked cruising. Naked cruising. <laughs> and, and mesh shirts. I would put those together. And, uh... <laughs> naked cruising, mesh shirts, peanut butter in the kitchen. Wow. We have train wrecked absolutely by day four yeah and we're only like 10 minutes into today well, so. <laughs> so those are some of the topics that keith and nicole are going to dig into today and again ambition here is to have people jump in and engage and, and throw their conversations up here as well hey how was your day yesterday tell me about today uh, it was great yeah like i said i felt like a human so i just did normal human things caught up on work and I feel like I, no, I, I didn't do anything super spectacular. I just didn't, yeah. I felt you didn't good. Die. Yeah, I didn't die. And yeah. <laughs> That's a good first <laughs> step of the day. Oh, yes. 
yeah. that is positive. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm going to try something on the air right now. You know, we have a, new, like a newsletter, right? We have the live and live newsletter. I have some subscribers on it. Just a couple, maybe. So I can actually link the live feed into the subscribers. I'm thinking about just heading the old send and then drop it into their inbox right now and see who opens it. Sure. Yeah, that sounds good. Could amazing. be beat on the air. And did you know you could stream today on your end? Did you are you streaming on your end too right now? No, but I actually logged in as a team member today. Good. And do you uh, see how that works? Kind of. Yeah. So should I okay, yeah. Because I see at the top all of the edits. Yeah. Of where I like we're streaming to right now. Is that where I could add mine? I think so. Yeah. Give it a shot. Okay. And see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> we'll either end or we'll end up on other and, ones as well. <laughs> and Business Athlete Nation, if we go away, you know <laughs> because Nicole broke the show. <laughs> she broke the show. It's true. And while you're breaking the show, I am going to change the message on the board here. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about my day yesterday. Ooh, I had an act right. I had an active one. It was it was a good day. So I'm gonna just gonna do this here. I'm gonna hit I'm gonna hit send and see what happens. Boom. Okay. So yeah, tell me about your day. I will tell you about my day. Yes. So we got out of here yesterday, which was which was great. We ran the loop. I got to, got my strength training in. I did. did you, I'm thinking you didn't get any strength training in yesterday. You've been, no. So yesterday was Wednesday. Sorry, rest recovery day yesterday. Yeah. So I did my yoga. I got my yoga taken care of, which is always great. I always enjoy my my, my Wednesday yoga. And then I was in. Then I had a show yesterday, a pre-recorded show with Will, Dr. William Attaway. Good discussion. The guy is, he's been a professional coach for 30 years. Wow, that's a long, that's amazing. He gets out of bed every single day, passionately trying to help people achieve their next spot. It's pretty cool wow. to me. I don't know. That's, that's, that's yeah. That is amazing. Uh, we get on the show and those that you might want to tune in, you can find that. Yeah, we dropped the last night. It'll drop in the podcast probably within the next week or so. It was a fascinating fellow. He was, he had a lot of inspiring stories to tell and a lot of interesting people he has met along the way. So that was good. That was a good chat with, oh, okay, hold on a second here. We're going to hit continue. And then we're going to hit send to everyone now and see what happens. Oh, oh. Okay. Okay. We're going to do this too. The good stuff, will, but live podcasting, live radio, live shows, you get to hear all the stuff happening. So here's what's happened. So yesterday, I'll tell Business Athlete Nation this. We show wrapped up. We had it in the old podcast machines. It was on Apple, Sp Apple podcast, Spotify by 15 minutes after the end of our show. Wow. So my goal with our show, Nicole, is to absolutely be in people's... Oh yeah, there we go, look at that. Hot, this is now, and so it'll be interesting to see if people too, so those that are subscribed, this is fantastic. I just did it, so I love doing stuff on the air and testing it. You're listening to this right now, we just did something testing. I'm a sub, I use Substack to, to drive our newsletters, got a bunch of newsletter subscribers. Moments ago, I sent a link, I said, hey, we're live on the air, you wanna catch a sneak peek? So those that are fans of Live and Lab and the Business Athlete Forms Lab might just tune in. For, mar for marketing people, there's a great way to, oh, and I see Nicole is now streaming to uh, her Facebook. Welcome, Nicole. Really, yep. It won't let me do LinkedIn. It says we can only do one LinkedIn, which is fine. Okay, but yeah. Instagram and, how about, and how about Instagram. Oh, yeah. In, you're, oh, yeah, you're on Instagram, too. You got a good yeah. following on Instagram. That's yeah. fantastic. <laughs> now, I think you can also uh, interact with your audience on Instagram. Okay. So yeah. In, a, in a different okay. window, you can interact with your audience. Now, yeah, also, allow me to show you, since we're uh, doing some live teaching on the air here, day four, live in the lab, mornings in the lab, sorry. You look in that right-hand side there, Bernard, you'll see comments and banners. Yes. You click on banners, you can start chatting in there and sticking the old street. You can stick the old the ticker and yes. I'll throw it over to you. So as we're talking about things, we can, you can change it up. Because today, so today we're going to, oh, so listen, let's do this. We're 16 minutes in. My, my, I wanted to get better, Nicole, at, at dropping breaks into the show. For yourself, mm -hmm. myself, get a little quick minute break. So that's what I'm going to do. Before we continue our show, exactly, and fill the coffee up, I'm going to throw us on to a 60-seconder, and we will be right. Okay. Let's do it.
All right, I'm back. Morning's in the lab with Keith and Nicole. Nicole's just getting herself settled here. Grab your coffee there. So I just got an update. I just got an update from Pod Status. You like to hear this, all of our listeners. New Zealand, live in the lab with Keith Bills. We are 25 in the entrepreneurship. Heck yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, we're 135 in business. Mornings in the lab in Canada debuts at 90. Woo! That's top 100. I'm not sure how that works. <laughs> so that is in Apple Podcast Daily News. I'll tell you how that works. And again, what I love about this, Nicole, for again, marketing folks, and you're a marketing person, NB Marketing, Nicole Bernard Marketing, those that are looking for some marketing services, you got to knock on Nicole's door or come knock to the debt lab. You get a hold of Nicole somehow, but we got experts here in the lab. That's what we do here in the lab. We help people be experts in marketing. But I'll tell you, I'm suspecting the reason we've, we've debuted so high is that we've been consistent. I was, I was thinking the same thing. Right? Because yeah. I'm going to suspect that if you're doing a daily show and you say you're doing a daily show and you don't show up every day, probably doesn't like that, right? And in my experience, I think people in the podcasting space start and pause and plunder their way through, right? Mm-hmm. Totally. I had a girl reach out to me a few weeks ago and she was like, Hey, for another guest to be on my podcast. And she was like, I just want to let you know, I've been doing this for a few years and you're one of the only ones that is like actually still around that I pitched to three years ago. I was like, Oh my goodness. Oh yeah. yeah it, it can be a lot, you know? Well, it's certainly a commitment. There's no question. Yeah, about that. It is no question about that. Hey, yeah. So I, I got to ask the question. Can you hear the music playing? I can. Mm -hmm. You can, eh? Yeah, I can. Oh, awesome. Okay, which means the audience can hear it. Okay, awesome. Listen, why don't we dig into uh, dig into the business topics? Sure. Let's do it. Let's let's do that. I got a topic for the audience today. We're gonna pull it up here. How to supercharge your business? Pull it up on the screen for us to chat about. How to supercharge? So this is the uh, tease us at the beginning here. How to supercharge your business in 2024? And uh, technology in 2024. Just put it right there. All right, so. The old reading into Entrepreneur Magazine. I like to read and just catch up on stuff. And so there's some obvious stuff in here, Nicole. But I think, again, the idea is to create mindfulness for people. Yeah. First thing, cool. stay up to date on new technology and trends. Are you good at that? Staying up to date on tech? I need to be a little better. I, I, I wouldn't say tech per se, but new updates to different like platforms and stuff that I use um, yeah. within the marketing world, but not tech specifically. So... That doesn't really answer your question, but. No, but it does. Because I, I think I, I would suspect many like you or maybe would answer the same way that we think we do. But let's face it, it's a cost, right? It's always an expense. And then we ask ourselves what we're going to get out of it. Right? What's yeah. the return on that investment in the technology? Mm -hmm. I would present to you, though, and present to our audience that if you're sitting here right now, starting your day, listening to us, ending your day, listening to us, right now is the time to be looking at tech. It's just so rapidly supercharging businesses there's no question that and this is really good a good topic to maybe set up a discussion a little bit around my vision for the lab here and my vision for the business athlete performance lab which is and technology has been an underpinning of everything that that we're doing here yeah without these tools readily available to us man i don't know if i couldn't create like i'm doing somebody that's doing three live hours of shows it's a lot yeah and then we're getting all this content wrapped up, packaged up, and distributed minutes after shows are over. It's impressive. I was talking to a guy in the radio industry, Nicole, and the old school radio industry, and was baffled at how quick we have been able to process, create, distribute content. It's mm -hmm. like, it's like I, I, don't, I don't get how you guys do that. It's staying up to date on technology and trends, right? Just staying yeah. ahead of it. All right, number two, Nicole Bernard, implement off-the-shelf solutions first. So what that means is a lot of people think they got to develop stuff themselves. I got to make my own app. I got to make my own tech solution. I need to go create my own thing. Not the right thing to do. Yeah. Why reinvent the wheel? Take the wheel, but make modifications to make it your own. You necessarily have to build a whole new one. Yes. You know what? I'll tell you what I have found, which is a great, great off the shelf tool as a software tool to do gr great things is Notion. Yeah. I, yeah. Do you use Notion? 
I have, I have with different clients and I've noticed it is definitely skews to like the startup world, which seems yes. like yes. that newer, keeping up with technology, different cool things like that. So a few of my clients that I've worked with, one I currently work with right now too, they're big notion fans, but I've, I've tended to stick into Google drive, which might, yeah. be old, but I don't know, it works for me and I, yeah, it, I don't know. But yes, I, I have. So it's interesting. So I'm a Google workspace person. The, the lab's built on Google workspace. Yeah. Yet it's interesting how design s- drives decision for, at least for myself. Sometimes I just, yeah. I enjoy using the notion experience over the, I feel like sometimes I'm digging into the past when I'm using Google drive, mm-hmm. not that I'm complaining about it. Cause it works. It works exceptionally well. So, yeah. but it doesn't look as, doesn't look as nice as that. And I like looking at that one. I don't know. It's just a bizarre reason, but the point is, it is a great off the shelf solution. If you're looking for technology to bring inside your house and do things that you want, you're thinking, oh, I got to create an app for this. No, you can probably do that inside a notion rudimentary to test mm-hmm. it, figure it out before you decide to decide if you want to build something. Yeah, totally. And I like like there's templates out there for notion. And I do like how it yeah. puts stuff at the side. Like it's almost, yeah, I think Google docs can do that too, but I don't know. The way they set it up, it is really nice to use in Notion. Do they have like spreadsheets and stuff? I that I don't, I'm not sure. Like, do no, they have so, that kind of? Okay. No, but they do have uh, they have smart tables, which allows you to uh, use spreadsheets in a similar way. They, they have smart tables that uh, and their formula process. But no, you certainly will want to uh, continue with either Excel or whether it's Google Sheets for your gotcha. for those, those significant needs of business. Mm-hmm. All right, number three in. How to supercharge your business using technology in 2024 in the business segment here, Mornings in the Lab with Keith and Nicole. Leverage generative AI. Now that kind of links to the first one. You and I have talked about it. And I think what we perhaps need to do on some of our shows is maybe do some chat GPT training or some prompts of the day or did you know this? Mm -hmm. Would that be of value to you? Yeah, totally. Like even what you taught me, of, what, two weeks ago, which I started yeah. to do, totally opened my eye. Again, like I feel like I'm one of those that has dipped my toes into yes. AI, but yeah, not using it the way I could be. So and I'm that would suspect- be amazing. And I'm suspecting there'll be a, a large percentage of our audience in the same shoes as you, which mm-hmm. is I, I, I've dabbled in it, I've touched it, played with it, but I really haven't done much with it. So yeah. uh, I think we can, I think I'm happy to take the lead on doing more with that with our audience and teaching people. And, and again, if you're starting your day or ending your day or just popping this somewhere into your day, I really want to leave you with nuggets. And this will be a nugget that you can get from us. So leverage your generative AI. There's, there's really no reason, in my opinion, Nicole, that you should not be using either ChatGPT or Gemini or Claude. There are co- Microsoft Copilot. Like they're built into everything now. Yeah, that's true. They really are. I didn't realize that either. You hear about it, but then I think once we realize, oh, like we're using it without even knowing it. Yes. uh, Yes. Yes. I'll be honest. I'm I'm using it quickly to, it's certainly improved our workflows. So again, when the show's over, we get it chopped up, cut up real quickly. Generative AI drives that entire process. Uh, Mm -hmm. There's back in the olden days, it would have took hours to chip, chop, crop, and the whole thing. All right. Next one in Many ways to supercharge your business 2024, streamline your processes and tools with automation. Again, we're a similar theme. Embrace AI, embrace tech, which in theory automates your business. Yeah. Do you use Zapier? <laughs> no, but I have. Another thing that I, sh- I mean, I love Zapier and I feel like it's like a black hole of awesomeness. But yeah, I have not gotten into it in a while and I definitely need to get in there and streamline some things that I do. <clears throat> so if you want to do a tutorial on that too, that would be amazing. <laughs> yeah. So you know what I would like to do? I would like a tutorial on Zapier myself. So maybe what we do is we'll get so we'll get an expert on the show. Yes. Okay. There's a girl that was on my podcast. She's amazing. And she's like a Zapier guru. So maybe I can get her on. That's uh, why don't we do that? Why don't you call her up? He'll knock on her door, proverbial door and say, Hey, you want to join Keith and Nicole in the live and do some Zapier training? Cause that'd be awesome. Yeah. Cause you know, cause you know what I'm thinking, Nicole, is that with topics like this, we can chop our show up into quick segments for people like how to's. So how to master Zapier in four minutes. So we're going to talk about it anyways. Ideally our shows are producing four to five, maybe six to seven, eight minute segments that teach somebody something. Yeah. Oh, I love that. 
Yeah, because right? that capacity for us to learn anyway <laughs> these days. Well, bingo. Yes. It's funny. Again, I was talking to somebody about this show, and he's like, you're doing another live show. I'm like, we, I'm awake anyways. I'm alive anyways. I might as well learn something or talk about something, right? And I'm reading this stuff anyways. I love sharing my knowledge. And I've, I was always the nerd in school who was like, hey, I read this. Did you know this? Really? Yeah. I it's love just, that. Those innocuous things that my son is becoming that, this person that knows this knowledge that you're like, really? Why do you know that? <laughs> Speaking of, I know, I know I have ADHD, so you're going to have to, I give you permission as our as co-hosts and friends and fellow athletes, if you need to bring me back to, to center, do though, do so, because like, I got shiny object syndrome. Are you familiar with the line in Saudi Arabia? No. The what in Saudi Arabia? The line. No. Oh, okay. So there's a hook. I am. I, I got to find somebody building the line for our show. And okay. the, li the line is a man-made vertical city oh, built from okay. nothing in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. So I'm going to hook that. I'm going to leave that there for you to consider and think about. She, she's going to go Google it. Google, I know. <laughs> exactly. So we're going to come back to the line out, Business Athlete Nation. We'll bring it up on another show. I have a goal here now. Not, not only is our goal to get Goggins on our show, I am going to get some people building the line on our show so they can teach the world. When I get nerdy and passionate about something, look out, because we're going to become experts in it overnight. Okay. All right. <laughs> Let's go. Shiny object. Where's the squirrel nation? All right. The business segment of the lab here. We are still chatting about how you can supercharge your business in 2024. Focus on data and smart analytics. Again, an obvious one. But again, I think Nicole Bernard, a lot of people overlook it, don't mm -hmm. pay attention to it because it's easier to overlook it. And yet there's so much help staring in front of you in the data. For sure. Yeah. Numbers can really tell like a story. And I think, yeah, you're totally right. We have a million things going on as business owners. So it's easy to make, oh, we'll come back to that. And for many like different things in our business, not just analytics, but yeah, I think taking a little bit of time to look at that can really make a huge difference in so many aspects of our business. That's it. That's it. I know that I, I've been digging more into the data on, on, our, on our YouTube channels, on our podcast channels, and, and making subtle tweaks along the way to, to the shows yeah. so that we can continue to improve, Im improvise and improve. Mm -hmm. uh, last but not least in how to supercharge your business with technology in 2024 is personalize your customer interactions. I want to talk about this one for a moment. So Ugh. I love obsessing over my guests on Live in the Lab. Again, mm -hmm. talking to an old school radio friend. And I said, hey, so my onboarding process, I send a welcome video and a welcome kit. I'm sorry, Nicole, you were early in the process. To every guest that comes in the lab. Mm -hmm. Personalized video, a personalized welcome kit. And then they do the show with me and they get a personalized video and a personalized thank you kit. I could not do that again with AI and technology and processes, but the feedback I get from people, mm -hmm. they're like, whoa, you're pro or whoa, I wasn't expecting that. Cause I've been on shows like perhaps yourself and sometimes you're like, okay, so am I talking to this person ever again or what's going to happen now? And that little extra step, taking yeah. 28 seconds to create a video since my hand, my phone's in my hand anyways. Yeah. Powerful stuff. So those of you that are looking to stand out from your competition, personalize your customer interactions. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. I get a lot of feedback about sending champagne, which was memorable and it comes with really? a note, same thing, but yeah, and, and I talked to a lot of people on the podcast and just in general, I think, I don't know, like it's, it is such a simple thing and I don't know if that art of just really taking a little bit of time to show some appreciation and personalization that is being lost, but when it comes up, like it, it is so impactful on people. Yes, so. yes, yes, yes. All right, so we are halfway through uh, day four of our show here, live mornings in the lab with Keith and Nicole. We're gonna throw a break on a one minute break, grab a coffee top up, and we're gonna come back. I am going to show you, and those that are watching, got a hook for you. And those that are listening on the podcast, we're going to come back in a minute. And I am going to show you a, where is my little tip here, audience? I'm going to not show you. No, I'm, yeah, yeah, no, no, we are not showing that. I'm going to show you 
a humanoid robot doing tasks that are going to blow you. You're going to be thinking you're watching Star Wars, but you're actually watching the future unfold in front of you. So that's coming up in a minute. Mornings in the lab. I'm going to throw something in front of you. It's going to fall under our AI pop culture segment of the show here. I'm going to blow your mind coming up in a minute. All right. See you in a minute. All right, Keith and Nicole back. Mornings in the lab. 35 minutes into our hour together, into our two hour show. Together. As you guys know, we stream live, absolute live, every error, every mistake to bear the laughter, the bad words, and then we run the loop. Mm-hmm. Oh, no bad words yet today. Good job. I, I was thinking about it last night with my daughter. I'm thinking, okay, so maybe I'm not going to, I'm going to try not to swear today. Although, listen, it's just, it's funny. So my son calls me yesterday after his hockey and we were talking and he's in the, he's in the Jeep and he's got his phone up in front of him there and he's hands free. Right. And he's, we're FaceTiming. And next thing I'm, I see these flashing lights behind him in the rear view, like out the back of the window and oh. they're approaching the car. So Carter just got his license three, three months ago. And I'm like, Carter, are you getting pulled over, man? And he's Oh, no oh no and i'm like oh awesome i'm just talking to myself i'm talking to my son could talk just like his dad so (laughs) yeah no cussing so far here 36 minutes okay so i promised everybody i promised y'all i was going to show nicole bernard a humanoid robot doing some crazy stuff that even when i saw it nerd guy here was like that is freaking awesome so i'm gonna stop talking let me show this to you hold on a second here I know you're going to love this. We're going to do this here. We're going to do this here. We're going to do this here. Check this out. Boom. Can you hear that? Uh-huh. All right. Hey, figure one, what do you see right now? I see a red apple on a plate in the center of the table a drying rack with cups and a plate, and you standing nearby with your hand on the table. Great, can I have something to eat? Sure thing. Great. Can you explain why you did what you just did while you pick up this trash? on it. So I gave you the apple because it's the only edible item I could provide you with from the table. Great. Based on the scene right now, where do you think the dishes in front of you go next? The dishes on the table, like that plate and cup, are likely to go into the drying rack next. Great, can you put them there? Of course.
All right. So how do you think you did? I think I did pretty well. The Apple found its new owner. The trash is gone and the tableware is right where it belongs. I agree. Thanks, figure one. You're welcome. If there's anything else you need help with, just let me know. So what do you think of that, Nicole Bernard? I feel like I'm watching a movie. That's insane. Right? Yeah. And uh, his voice and the way he responds, it, right? it doesn't sound like a robot. I know, I know. So this is, this again, uh, this is fun for me because I'm hoping with this show where we can create content that has somebody listening right now. I'm mm -hmm. saying, all right, click the, so if you're listening right now, click the link on the channel or in the description. My hands are all over the place. Or go to inside.bapple.ai. I have the link in there. So Ambition is on the inside.bapple.ai newsletter, our main site. Every single day, Keith and Nicole have a show. All the links to the content we're talking about are going to be in that post. So we're talking about this right now. If you want to watch the video, I invite you to watch the video. It is pretty effing cool. I never saw anything. When I saw it, when I watched it last night, I knew that I had to share it with Business Athlete Nation. Mm -hmm. This fits the AI category of our pillars. Th this is coming. Yeah, it's crazy. And who makes those? So yeah. that is made by a company. I'm not sure who makes the company. The I'm sorry, I'm not sure who, who made the robot. The robot was named Figure One. Like C3PO, this is called you know, Figure One, and yeah. they use the open AI language model. So, what you heard talking is actually Chat GPT. It's, it's bizarre, but also, uh, have you seen Elon's robots? Mm -mm. Yeah, so he's got robots he's building for his factories, but they would look quite, quite, they appear to be not, they look rudimentary compared to what I just showed you here. Yeah, so there you go. So, I, I, within the next 10 years, those things are going to be within our world. Yeah, that's crazy. No question. So again, check it out, everybody. Check out, uh, oops, that's the wrong thing. Check out uh, the robots uh, doing crazy things that you'll see here on the show here this morning. All right, so I want to get into our next topic. i got to find the music here because I see guys, some people popping into the show here and they're thinking, hey, where's the tunes? These guys are boring. No way, man. Get some, get some music here. All right, so why don't we get into, all right, we are still in the A segment of our show are you a Bo Jackson fan? Yeah. I watched him growing up as a kid. I knew that. I knew you were going to tell me that. <laughs> tell, tell, me, tell, me, tell me your favorite Bo Jackson story. The poster of him with a bat and football pads on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? Do. Like, like that. That's like the first thing that comes to mind. Yeah. But I mean, impressive to be able to, to, we were just telling our son about him recently because oh, yeah. people play professionally two different sports. So do you, do you think that he, yeah, I remember those two sep two separate sports, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Football yeah. and baseball. And I think he makes like handmade arrows or bows and arrows now. So he talks in the latest men's health magazine, Nicole Bernard. Oh. I want, to, I want to pull it up here. He talks about the fact <laughs> that we're wrong. Yeah, exactly. That's what you're looking for here. Let me just pull this up here for us. Um, I, now. I think he's so it's funny you asked that question because he talks about how training has turned him. He says he's a senior citizen. He's like, I'm training's changed for me. So yeah. let me just pull it up for us. We can talk about that. I, I, I thought I'd share that because I think a lot of the audience will relate to he might have been the first business athlete or one of the original business athletes. The guy was back back in the day when he first came out and people were like, what, you're doing how many sports? Yeah. Right, so in the 80s and 90s, multi-sport phenomenon, he was Aww. quarterback and baseball and all that. Now he calls himself a senior citizen. <laughs> Look Is at he him. really in his 60s? Uh, yeah, he's 61. He's cute. Yeah. And he doesn't work out much and he's over 61. He, yeah. he cycles, he walks, and he birds hunts. So get that, eh? A bird hunter. Yeah. I wonder if he uses his bow and arrows. <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> he hasn't been to a gym in 15 to 20 years. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. What do you think about that? I mean, I think each person is 
different and if that's what works for him and he's moving remember we talked about the keys to yesterday yes longevity uh moving more so i think and i actually it's funny because i pulled up the blue zones at, after our call yesterday because i was like yeah. i hadn't thought about that in a while and i was trying to think of what those commonalities were and one of their like commonalities is that they move but it's not like they're not on a treadmill they're not in a gym i can't remember what they called it but it's like purposeful moving so it's walking or different things like that, or just working in a garden. But yeah, I'm sure bird hunting, like that's gonna, that's pretty strenuous, like being out there, especially at 61, so. Yes, intentional. Yeah, intentional, that's what it was, intentional movement, thank you. It's the key word, right? Intentional mm -hmm. movement, yeah. Yeah. What is it with bird watching or bird hunting that relates to people as they get a little older in life? Because yeah. I've experienced it, let's talk yeah. about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I, do you think we just start to appreciate things more as we get older? Because yeah, I used to be really annoyed with the birds that would start going off at four in the morning. But now that I'm up at four in the morning, I'm like, oh my God, that sounds amazing. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes, exactly. Oh, I'm going to try some new views out here today. I, I think it is because we slow down as we age. Yeah. I, I noticed the birds. I really started noticing the birds when we went to the Galapagos. Oh, yeah. Did, you know, did so you I've been, penguins? Isn't that where penguins are? There are. <clears throat> and there's, oh, what are, what's the, what is it? It is the, they're the boobies. Oh my <laughs> God. We're talking naked peanut butter. Now we're talking the boobies. So we've got trailers all over the show today. They are, <laughs> the, what are they? The, the boobies? No, the blue boobies? The, what the hell are they? The Galapagos boobies. I'm gonna, I got to quickly Google this uh, nation. Galapagos boobies bird. It is the fun facts about the yeah, the blue-footed booby. Mm. Yes. Let, so let me show. So do you know what that is? I mm. saw them when I was in the Galapagos. Let me show the blue-footed booby. It is a awesome-looking bird. That uh, where is the blue-footed booby? My world here. Tab. There we go. Blue-footed booby. There we go. Blue-footed booby. Oh my goodness, that's so yeah. cute. <laughs> yeah. So it's really the only place in the world where they encourage you to take pictures and look at and touch boobies yeah <laughs> new orleans as well so. yes of course <laughs> i forgot about new orleans right the old idea of dropping the beads everywhere i wonder if you took the beads to the galapagos if the boobies were flashing their boobies i don't know oh yeah oh, that'd be fun no those are so cute i've never seen those i've heard of them but i've never seen a picture of one <laughs> yes yeah but we talk about bird watching bird hunting i started when i went on that trip birds were everywhere and i just i think it is you slow down you appreciate things a little more i know that i even notice my birds around my neighborhood a little more mm -hmm. maybe it's because as you age you've seen everything else and you're like okay now it's time to look at the birds right yeah you're like oh i can still hear oh, okay <laughs> that's it <laughs> you think about it if you've been around for 50 60 70 years you've seen a lot you've yeah. experienced a ton and I'm going to suspect in your first 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, so for all my, all of our business athlete nation in your 30s, you're not even paying attention to the birds yet. You're like, Keith, Nicole, there's no birds. No, trust me, you're not seeing the birds yet. They're out there. They're out there. Have you seen that movie? It's Jack Black and Owen Wilson, and they go on like this bird hunt, that hunt. It's like they go, you, it's, you travel around the world. I think it's actually a, a real thing but you have to watch birds or find them in their natural habitat. It's no. hilarious. The movie is hilarious. Well, I need to see it. Yeah. And they, they compete. Yeah. It's good. Are you a Jack Black fan? It makes me laugh and my son loves Kung Fu Panda. So yeah, it's been a while since Jack Black has done. So is he making more children's movies now? But I, I feel like we haven't seen much Jack Black lately. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, yeah, I have not. Yeah. I agree. I feel, oh, and Martin, Steve Martin's in it too. It's called the big year. It's cute. You should check it out. Okay, I will. I like Steve Martin. Yes, he's hilarious. One of the greatest movies of all time, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Mm -hmm. John, the late, the, the best, the late John Candy. Oh, yes. We watched Uncle Buck not that long ago. Oh, another great movie of all time. Mm -hmm. Uncle yeah. Buck. Yeah. We, I, I, man, we don't have a lot of great comedians like that anymore. You know, yeah. we don't. Yeah, Do Andy was awesome. Chris Farley. Oh, oh, remember how Chris Farley used to enter Saturday Night Live or he'd enter onto the late shows? He'd just be running in and stumbling in and yeah. he'd make such a grand entrance. Mm -hmm. His hair is all crazy. His hair is like, all yeah. crazy. 
What's unfortunate about Chris Farley is that we all, we took, and this is where I, I, when you reflect upon it, Nicole, we as society very much exploited him through our laughter with somebody who's very much struggling with his demons. Yeah. And it's, it, it's sad when you think about that part of it, because, you know, he struggled with his demons and to, to, to battle that he created humor and which right. made us all laugh because his joy in life was making everybody else laugh. Yep. But as we know, there's an, unfortunately some dark sides to those situations, depression, and maybe on an upcoming show would be some good topics for us to dig into. Robin Williams, another one, another great that we lost way too early. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a, com- a comic that struggled with things that we don't see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. I'll tell you, one of the greatest songs uh, that I love to, I'm trying to pull it up here quickly for the to, to relate to, is Charles Barkley. No, what's that guy? Gnarls Barkley? No, what's his name? Oh, my goodness. Not Charles Barkley. I'm not going to sing it on the air. I'm going to have to find this later for the audio because make a bad radio, bad show right now. I am going to find it and pull it up to share it with you guys, but yeah, good song. Anyways, all right. Nine minutes left in the, in, in the top of the hour. In nine minutes left in, in today's Mornings in the Lab. Day four, Keith and Nicole. We're going to work towards wrapping it up. we got two more, two more topics to, to get you all on your day today. First studies, Nicole Bernard, that connect sleep duration to how long you live. And then, Nation, we're going to get into if you cruise and you like to hang out naked, you're going to want to just hang around for the end of the show because I got some advice for you. <laughs> got some advice for you naked cruisers. You know what the funny thing is? Most of the cruisers, Nicole, I'm thinking are probably in their 50s and 60s and 70s. We're not talking like Love Island cruise. Yeah. <laughs> We're talking normal cruise. Mm-hmm. Anyways, we'll go to cruising. We're going to go to naked cruising in a few moments. But before we get to naked cruising, I want to talk about some of the first ever studies that connect sleep duration to how long you're going to live. And I thought this, so again, doing this, building the business in the air in front of everybody, I thought mm-hmm. that I, I saw some people in the story that I'm going to share with the audience here. I'm going to pull this up here. That's. I think this is a great way to build great shows and great network is I think we might want to invite somebody like Dr. Chelsea Roshlib on our show, or we might want to invite somebody like Dr. Raj Dasgupta on our show. And I found them both on LinkedIn. I'm like, hey, go knock on their door and say, hey, we're doing a 12-minute segment next week. You want to come talk about sleep deprivation? Yeah, totally. The same way that I got a hold of you to say, hey, do you want to come talk about running 48 miles in 48 hours? Yeah. So Mm -hmm. there was a study, and I found this study in, I found the study in the brighter side of news. I did my homework. This is not fake news. This is real stuff. There's real, I did my homework, Nicole, around the authors too. I'm like, okay, so is there actually a Dr. Chelsea Roshrib? And is there actually a Dr. Raj Dasgupta? Mm -hmm. And there is. Just like I saw there was actually a Nicole Bernard when I found you in entrepreneur magazine mm-hmm. i do my homework nicole i believe it i do my homework all right okay so what's this talk about this talks about the fact that there's an undoubted allure to the concept of the afternoon nap mm-hmm. however poorly timed naps too long of a nap hurts you really okay so yeah. what should we <laughs> shoot for you want to shoot for naps less than 30 minutes you get too long into 30 minutes, you start to disrupt the whole sleep cycle of your life. So napping is not a bad thing. However, uh, you really want to try to drive that robust quality of like nocturnal sleep at night. So you really want to get your good sleep at night. And if you have to have a nap during the day, 20 minutes, 10, 20 minutes is pretty good. But don't try to dig any further than that. Moderation. I fall asleep in 10, 20 minutes. Like, I'm just, I've never, yeah, I've been a napper. Like, I can remember, like, kindergarten, like, laying on my mat, like, when is this done? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you weren't a good, you remind no, me. No, I'm not a good napper, but I can sleep, like, 16 hours solid. So I don't know if that's good or bad. <laughs> Maybe that's why my wife is like, I think you're going to get along well with Nicole, because my wife doesn't nap either. She's like, nap, I don't want to nap. Yeah. No. I move around. I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, go move around. Go move around. I'm going for a nap. Oh, I'm old. <laughs> so you're a napper? So, and yeah, how, what is your routine? So I don't normally nap. Although if I feel like I need to grab 20 minutes or 30 minutes or 15 minutes or some time to put my head down for a few minutes, I do. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. I do. I, rest. I can take a minute to stop, but I, yeah, and I can't fall asleep in 10, 20 minutes during the day. Yeah. So really the, so here's the benefits of napping, right? Improves learning, reduces sleepiness, aids memory formation, regulates emotions, I don't mind sitting down and I'll be the first person to admit this to business athlete nation because nobody else will do it. I sometimes will have a nap before I go into a big meeting. Interesting. Because I feel refreshed. I feel ready to go. I wake up with a purpose. Mm -hmm. No nap. I'll get up and go for, I'll just, I'll either go for a walk on my treadmill or I'll get outside or I'll have a coffee or have some, but it just, and then I'm ready to go. I I set the alarm, but it's not uncommon for me to go grab a few minutes on the couch, on the chair, the dogs jump on me and I put my head down and I'm ready to go again, but not long, not longer than 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. So I know that nation will catch naps, but nobody's out of nap. What you guys all nap. Oh, almost said the F word there, Nicole, but it's almost the top of the hour. So I'm thinking we get later in the hour because by the time I get to live in the lab with Keith Bellis at noon. Today, we have a guest, by the way, Shannon Houchin, storyteller, a peach storyteller. She built her fortunes selling peaches in a roadside stand. What? Oh, that's amazing. That is amazing. Yeah. I'm pretty good at segueing stuff in there. Eh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just weaving it in. You know what I'm thinking about doing? Oh, we didn't have time to talk about this today. Oh. I'll, I'll, I'll give this to <laughs> Uncle Keith's got shiny object syndrome. How about two dads in the lab talking sports, an evening show? Mm. Ooh, mm-hmm. How about two dads in the lab working out? Mm-hmm. How about a dad and a daughter in the lab talking? Oh, that'd be fun. Uh, no. Hey, Pipes. <laughs> love you, girl. <laughs> Anyways, benefits of napping. Take a nap today, guys. Girls, everybody, take a nap. Grab 10 minutes today, and I suspect, I'm going to suggest that it's going to make you feel pretty good. And I'm going to ask Nicole tomorrow on the show if she took a nap today. And I'm going to bet she's not going to, but I'm going to encourage her to do so because she's been feeling under the weather, so maybe she'll consider taking a nap. All right, two minutes left, and I, go ahead. I had two minutes left, and I promised this, before we said goodbye today, I was going to talk about naked cruising. So we have been, we've been on the show for an hour now and I've talked about, I've promised you guys that I would discuss naked cruising with with business athlete nation. And I want to share the story with everybody that I found late last night as I was working on myself to go to sleep. That if you like to hang out naked on your balcony, drinking your morning coffee, enjoying your morning coffee, maybe having a drink in the middle of the afternoon or the evening. It's fine. Matter of fact, they encourage you to do it. Mm, Okay. However, Carnival Cruise Line says, everybody on the bridge can see you. And there's probably a lot of people at sea on other ships and other people on their balconies also seeing you naked. So Mm. while we're not encouraging you not to be naked, we will tell you that if you're going to be naked, everybody is going to see you hanging in full bear. And when I read this, Nicole, I thought to myself, wasn't well, that obvious? Clearly not. If they yeah, had this survey, and out of here's the best part: five hundred and seventy-two thousand followers. This was one of the biggest topics of discussion: cruising naked. So there you go. I'm going to put that link to the story. You can find that inside Bapple.ai. Go subscribe to the newsletter because I think what I'm going to do, Nation, is I'm going to pop that. I'm going to pop our discussion feeds into the newsletter. Pop it into your inbox in the morning. You can wake up and you can come dial in and hang out with Keith and Nicole. Nicole, we're done. I love it. And what a way to go out. Naked cruising. And it's timely too because everybody's probably planning their summer trips. So now everybody knows. This is right. Yes. So if you're planning your summer trip, think about naked cruising. It might, and hey, if maybe if you're on your second honeymoon or you're looking to rejuvenate your marriage, naked cruising might be the way to go about it. Yeah, it's true. All right. Keith and Nicole, live mornings in the lab, Monday to Friday, 7 a.m. till 9 a.m. We're both going to get out of here, going to get on with our days. Nicole has an announcement tomorrow, Friday. I invite you all to hear it. 
And one last thing, Nicole, another hook. I think tomorrow or next week, I want to give some money away. Mm, okay. That sounds fun. I think I want to pull something out of the old radio tricks. The old, hey, listen in. If you're the hundredth listener, if you're the thousandth listener, if you're the, if you're this, we're going to give you this. So I don't know. I'm just, te- I'm teasing that to the audience. Mm-hmm. Maybe that works. Maybe it does work, but we've got to try. Yeah. So. Totally. All right. Keith, yeah. Nicole, we're out of here. Nicole, last words, anything to say before we say goodbye? No, have a great day. It's Thursday, so Friday Eve. Awesome. Kill it. Awesome. We'll see you guys later. Tune in today. Lou Noon, Live in the Lab with Keith Bills, Shannon Houchin. You can find us on YouTube, X, LinkedIn, all the platforms. And of course, our shows, Two Dads in a Lab, Mornings in the Lab, and Live in the Lab with Keith Bills, all available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. But to find us, go to inside.bapl.ai. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye, Nicole. Bye. Take care.